Welcome to another presentation of Autodesk Revit MEP 2012. My name is Tom Cassell. I'm an MEP Technical Specialist with MicroCAD Training and Consulting. And in this presentation, we'll be covering what's new for the electrical discipline in Revit MEP. Some of the features which we'll be covering will include the new systems and how to create an electrical circuit, how to edit a panel, there's new panel options, as well as importing and exporting features, and even work sharing enhancements that have been made in 2012. Okay, so there are four major topics that we need to cover. The first one that we're going to stop on is going to be conduit. The major improvement in 2012 from 2011 with Conduit is now the ability to create parallel Conduit runs. So in 2011, they improved 2011 with Conduit and Cable Tray finally. So in 2012, now we can take this Conduit and Cable Tray that we run and create parallel runs with it. Now what that means is for all you people who work with large data buildings, large office buildings, data centers again, uh, even hospitals where there's going to be huge conduit runs, either power, data, or any other type of conduit run. What happens now is we can create the initial run that we want to duplicate and then go click parallel conduit runs. Now with parallel conduit runs, because we have the differences between having elbows or bends, we can use same radius elbows as we create the parallel run or we can use concentric bend as we create the conduit run. Now if you're using a bend elbow, Revit understands the minimum bend that's allowed for two inch conduit in this case. So if we try to shrink that elbow, it's going to accurately warn you that you can't make an elbow smaller than 10 inches or whatever the minimum bend radius would happen to be. Now in this case, you can also create stacked conduit runs. So not just four horizontally, but I can create vertical runs as well. Again, data centers, you could be running 20, 30 conduits in the same run coming out of your main central uh, room or your uh, data center or whatever building, whatever room's holding all the, the data and, and telephone information. So we can create as many runs as we want and you can set the offset distance. Now the one mistake I don't want anybody to make is when you hover over your first piece of conduit and click, it's only going to create a parallel run of that one piece of conduit. If you just press tab, it'll create a parallel run for all the conduits of that run. Now after the conduit run has been created, each one of these conduits is independent. So you want to create the first run to the extent that you want to copy it first. Because after the run's been copied, this is now considered separate conduit runs and they need to be modified manually, separately. In other words, if this is now going to branch off and go to the left to feed these other rooms, I can shorten this conduit, go grab more conduit, and start running off in a different direction. Now the ability to make conduit runs helps us in many ways. Now, the other benefits to this, let's take a look at what that looks like in 3D. So there's my conduit running off in the other direction. Here's my conduit coming out of my power panel. Up until this version, 3D views have been completely useless because you can use them for visualization, we can add materials, and we can render, but we couldn't do anything with them. What you can do now in a major improvement to 2012, a second major improvement to 2012, is the ability to save the orientation of this view. Now what that does is that locks it so you can't rotate it. But that's not really an improvement. Locking a 3D view sounds like a waste. But the reason why you can now lock your view is because when you lock it, you can now do something you could never do before, which is tag in 3D. So this is great if you want to do something like what I've done here, which is give a very complicated scenario of conduit rising and bending and turning. I can now give it a 3D look, and I don't have to cheat and use text to tag this conduit. I can do tag by category and click on the conduit and place the tags on the conduit and adjust my scale accurately and there's my two inch tags and as with any tag I can tag each conduit individually I can tag conduit in any view um, I can tag any object that could be tagged in plan 
can now be tagged in these 3D views. I can tag with a leader, without a leader. It's completely up to you. But now these 3D views become a much more useful tool for, for construction and for fabrication. Another improvement to Revit MEP in 2012 that's not related to electrical, but rather benefits all disciplines is work sharing. Now work sharing up to this point, you have multiple users in a project and I'm going to, you know, drawing the conduit, I realize, all right, this cable tray is going to be in my way and I really need to shorten it. So I take it and I go to move it and you get a pop-up that says, I can't use it because somebody else has actually borrowed these elements at the moment. So I place that editing request, which a lot of people who've been using Revit for a long time realize that that's kind of useless because there's nothing that actually notifies the other person. Now, while this is something that I can't demonstrate, what will happen now is the user will actually get a pop-up that will warn them, much in the same way AutoCAD notifies you of an XREF being out of date, Revit will now notify you of pending requests to borrow elements. So that ability really makes that work sharing a lot easier to use when you have offices where all your users on a project aren't necessarily sitting in close proximity. Something else that will save time related to that is the fact that we now have a new button down here where I don't need to click on that conduit or cable tray or any other device to figure out somebody else owns it, I can now actually say, check, show me the checkout status of all the elements. And it shows me everything in green I'm currently checking out. Everything in red is borrowed by somebody else. Now that may not be good enough. I may actually want to know who owns what so I can sort by owners. In which case, if I go look at the work sharing settings, I can see that our other instructor, Lara, happens to own all my cable tray right now, and I happen to own all the conduit in this area. Everything that's left in gray is open for borrowing. And other sorts that you have is what may need a model update. So as you can see, that Lara actually hasn't changed anything. So nothing's been saved back to central. Therefore, I'm not out of date on any objects. And I can even check to see what work sets objects have been put on. Now I'm not currently using work sets, so everything is on the same work set of work set one. The colors for things like checkout status or for owners are completely adjustable. I can go through and say, you know what, all my stuff should be in blue. This is more for your presentation more than anything else. It's not as if you would ever print this to give it to a different uh, company or for the client to see. So this is just for you. But again, very valuable information to know that checkout status, okay, I can't borrow any of that cable tray. And then more importantly, the owner, so I know who to say, can you please save to central? That way I can continue working without any disruption. So extremely useful for the entire MEP industry. The last improvement that we'll be covering in this presentation is an exporting improvement to export to AutoCAD DWGs. Now it's always been pretty good exporting this floor plan to a DWG, export multiple sheets to a DWG. There's always been a lot of settings here. Well now there's even more. First they've cleaned up the layer export so it looks more like your view visibility dialog box. So when you're saying well I want doors to export like doors I don't have to sort through that entire long list. Now it's much cleaner and easier to see. So making changes in here. You also get the ability now to add layer modifiers. So if you wanted to add a fire rating modifier or a phase created modifier, so that way it'll auto sort your door by a door existing, a door new, you can do that now as well. When you export to AutoCAD, you can control the line types. You can say what's going to happen now when I export my dashed line type, I can tell it what AutoCAD line type it's going to export to. So the dashed in Revit may be equivalent to the dashed in AutoCAD or it may not. Now as you can see up top you can load whatever AutoCAD line styles you're using. So you can load the LIN file 
that you're currently using in AutoCAD into here in order to accurately map your export to AutoCAD. It's going to make the export to AutoCAD, the line types, and the line weights come out a lot cleaner. Hatch patterns as well, same exact rule. It now maps to an AutoCAD PAT file, which you can map to your default AutoCAD PAT file and say, concrete hatch patterns that I'm using need to map to the AR conch hatch pattern in AutoCAD. That way, this present, prevents AutoCAD from creating a whole bunch of new unnecessary fill patterns and line types for exporting. And the last ability is mapping fonts. So this is the last one that's new where I can go through and say City Blueprint needs to map to AutoCAD's Arial. And again, in AutoCAD, AutoCAD City Blueprint may look slightly different than Revit City Blueprint. It may not be using the exact same font. Or in AutoCAD City Blueprint may not be as legible as it is in Revit. So in AutoCAD, you may want it to be Arial. Also, for when exporting to other consultants that will need these files, you'll need to be able to map these in a way that they can use them and they may not read City Blueprint, especially if you do have a custom font that you're using. The other abilities at the end are the same that were there in 2011. They're just laid out a little differently so you can choose what type of colors are exporting, whether or not you're getting ACES solids or poly meshes for exporting. A note, ACES solids are typically better if the other user is going to be trying to work in 3D with this file. And then units and coordinates as well as um, general changes for exporting rooms and areas and then no plot layers. So these are the great improvements that have been made in 2012. I have one more improvement that is back to being related to electrical. It's not as fast or as impressive as parallel can conduit runs. However, it is necessary for doing your work and it involves panel schedules. Now in a panel schedule up till now, uh, they're fairly flexible. You can really make a panel schedule look any way you want. And what we're gonna see is that they've made a couple more improvements to just so you can customize it just a little bit better. On the Manage tab, I can go in and edit these panels and go in and take a look at it. And as I mentioned, they're pretty customizable. If I wanted to see the trip rating before circuit description, you can move columns, re, uh, delete columns, add columns, change columns. So you can really do anything you want. What's been improved on in this version is that now you can adjust how the loads show. So in other words, I can sort them by phase or I can leave them as the default, which is in a split column, which is what you see here. Or I can change them to use a shared column with a slash. My opinion is that it looks a little cleaner. You could also do mirrored phase columns if you want. So let's change it to show something a little different of loads in a shared column. Another feature, though, is when you have a three-pole circuit, I don't always want to see one, three, five. I'd rather just see it all in one single row. So you get the ability now for show circuit number on one row for a multi-phase circuit. Also, another change, which I'm not going to adjust now, but instead of showing loads where I, you know, show 2400 or 1200 uh, as the load on a circuit, you can actually show it as the current. So the amperage can be shown instead of the load. And when you say OK to that, it makes an adjustment. I can take that adjustment and go to my power panel one and just re-update the template so it now shows my new changes. And so you can see that I have a load of 1254 on a three-pole circuit of 135. I have a load of 1045 over on the other side on a three-pole circuit of 246. So now it looks even further the way I want it to look. So it's just more flexibility to the panels that you already have a lot of control over. I'd like to thank you for joining me on this What's New in Revit MEP 2012 with a focus on electrical presentation. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact us at MicroCAD Training and Consulting. We'd be happy to answer any further questions on what exactly Revit MEP could possibly do for you. Thank you very much and have a great day.